sorry. Yeah, thanks guys. I know it's Monday. I know it's really hard to find some time to join me, but I'm really grateful you can join me tonight for this writing webinar. Yeah, I'm really sorry for this YouTube thing, <laughs> but we've um, already fixed it. Yeah. All right, so let me introduce myself. Let me tell you something. Um, okay, let me tell you something about myself. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your support, guys. Thanks, thanks a lot. So I'm still waiting for some people to join, okay? Okay, let me just... Um, Okay, so I hope all... Okay, let me, let me just post something. Hey guys, there is a new link in my bio, so just join me. Um, I'm really sorry for everything, but something is wrong with YouTube, but we're going to start right now. I hope you can join me, everything is fine. Okay. So first of all, we're going to like, um, I'm really sorry guys, it's really hard <laughs> to start after all that I've been through <laughs> right now, but I think uh, you can fast forward this a little bit. So we're going to speak about part one and part two and about mistake that you like a lot of people make all the time okay a little bit about myself um so <laughs> okay guys i gonna like do you can you see me can you hear me everything i hope everything is fine all right so guys i have like at least seven years of experience and i've been teaching IELTS for a long time and uh, well I've had a lot of experience teaching people from different countries like Russia, China, Portugal and so on and uh, well it helped me to understand that you guys have cultural differences and you've been taught differently in your culture and your uh, like educational system is absolutely different. So and what you have to understand is IELTS is like a Western style of writing and we're going to well to touch upon that a little bit uh, at the end. So the thing you have to understand that it's a different style of writing. It's different from your country. Okay, so of course I take IELTS myself every two years uh, because I want to share real experience, not from the books, not from the sites, because uh, one thing is just to have this English level and so on, you can be like, I don't know, advanced level, proficiency level, but if you don't know the criteria, if you don't know, if you've never been in stressful situation, like this exam so you've never realized how hard it is sometimes because timing is absolutely crazy so yeah of course we all can write great i don't know great descriptions i mean grab descriptions and great essays um all right we can we can write everything but well, since we have a time limit and we're a little bit tired, it's absolutely different. And which is like the, the most important thing here is not only your language, it's also like everything about exam skills. OK, so, um, yeah, I've been, you know, working with ex examiners and with real examiners. And I like I've been taught how to evaluate your writing how to assess your writing and so it's like it's really it's really i don't know unique experience for me because um so band descriptors that you have uh in public version is like the first thing you should start with preparing with preparation okay but i know a little bit more than these band descriptors that that's why it's like a little bit easier for me 
Okay, so I want to, you know, I want to tell you guys, I know this situation. I've been in your shoes before because I've been practicing with essays too because uh, like I've been taking this test since uh, 2012, okay? So, of course, it, like even though I'm a teacher, I still practice doing this, okay? Because it's a special skill and... So, yeah, you have to do it in a certain moment of time, like about 40 minutes. Okay, so I know that it's hard, but let me help you out here a little bit, okay? So, if you need to switch on a camera, like, let's, yeah, let's do this, uh, because you guys might not see me. So, I hope you've joined me. I really hope, okay? So... Let me switch on the camera. Oh, just a second. I'm really sorry. Yeah, just a second. Oh, this, like, you know, I've been teaching through Zoom. It's so, it's so easy. It's much easier than YouTube, okay? Because YouTube is something absolutely crazy. But I'm really happy that we've done this, okay? Um, yeah. Okay, so, I know that you guys, uh, like feel this like it's really challenging to start writing but to get everything right the first thing you should know is like referring to great like to materials that we all um like you know that we all can trust first of all this is ielts official uh, side and this is IDP IELTS Essential okay uh, so practice everything you find on these sites okay so I need to change the slide just a second guys okay so make sure you prepare with the authentic materials and official sites like British Council and IDP British Council and IDP are the two owners of IELTS exam nobody else <laughs> owns it so please I know that you have like a lot of sources but trust only these and I also advise to practice with Cambridge IELTS books starting from the 10th because you know, guys, um, it's like IELTS keeps changing, all right, all the time. And every little thing is being changed all the time. So listening might be different from the fourth book or from the fifth book. That's why just refer to the materials which, like, which are from 2015 at least, okay? Which are new ones. Yeah, these are the sites, IELTS um, ORG and IELTS Essentials, com, okay? And be familiar with the band descriptors because IELTS writing, it's not just like, you know, free writing or it's not um, like for a newspaper article, you are not going to like, you know, to catch the attention of a reader, you don't need this. All right, guys. So just, I gotta like, you know, be real quick with the band descriptors. So I, I'm gonna show how they are different because if you wanna get six or if you wanna get seven, you, you should know them by heart. There are four criteria that are being checked here, okay? So make sure you are familiar with that. Okay, so here is band six, for example. There are four criteria. Task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy. So it's like for task one, okay? So there are different um, graphs or pie charts or I don't know, There's there can be a process or something like that. So the examiners check your ability to report the data. So you should use academic formal vocabulary. You should, in, you should paraphrase the task, give the overall features, I mean the general features of the uh, graph, and then describe it. So, it's not just the description. There is like no conclusion, there is no opinion, so nothing like that. It should look like a boring report, okay? 
So, and how is band six different from band seven, for example? Yeah, so you address the requirements of the task here, but in band six, you fulfill all the requirements. So you cover them. Address means, I mean, this is the first line in task achievement. I hope you found it. Um, so when you address the requirements of the task, you just do it like, you know, like really like, in a simple manner. If you cover everything, it means you fully cover all the requirements of the task. Okay, so and if you don't have an overview, this is the second line, by the way, presents an overview with information appropriately selected. Okay, so if you don't have an overview, you are gonna have only five for your graph description, unfortunately, but that's why it's really important. Okay, so as you can see, here is adequate range of vocabulary. So band six is like, okay, I mean, you've written it and so it's okay. You don't have so many mistakes. It's fine. Okay. So, but look at grammatical range and accuracy. It uses a mix of simple and complex sentence forms. What is a complex sentence? Make sure you know. Okay, so Google it. So relative, non-relative clauses, you should know. Okay, make some errors in grammatical and punctuation, blah, blah, blah. So this is band six. It's okay to make mistakes here. As for band seven, look, it's you don't address the requirements of the task. You cover them. So here is the difference. In band six, we had just presents an overview. So there is an overview. But for band seven, you need a clear overview of main trends, differences, or stages. Okay, that's why, guys, I ask you to write how many stages does this process have? Okay, or so the prices rose in this year, but they fell in this year. You need to show difference, okay? So you should clearly present and highlight key features, okay? So there is no need to describe the whole graph. You need just to highlight the key features. And the things you have in your overview paragraph, the same you should write about, like, I mean, in the details paragraph, but give numbers, give comparison. Make sure you know how to compare. Make sure you've learned all the phrases similarly compared to and so on okay look at coherence and cohesion on your right logically organizes information and ideas so if you have something in your overview and you speak about for example something big and then about something small so the same should be in your details paragraph you can't say about like something which is i don't know remain the same okay so just everything should be logical okay and remember about the cohesive devices as for the lexical resource uses a sufficient range of vocabulary to allow some flexibility and precision what is flexibility it's when you can show the examiner that you can actually use um different grammar different methods of paraphrasing okay it's not only synonyms you can paraphrase with changing the voice from active to passive or from passive to active you can change parts of speech okay how metal is produced the production of metal so you still can use the words so you change it from produced to production all right so this is flexibility Precision is how precise your language is. That is why be careful with synonyms. Sometimes they are not precise. You think you can change city to town? No, you can't because they are different, okay? You, like, you can change children to school children, but not always. It, it like, depends on the topic, okay? So, 
Here again, less common lexical items with some awareness of style and collocation. Guys, style is your everything. It should be academic and formal and boring. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can like make some mistakes here. As for the grammatical range and accuracy, look, in band six, they had uses the like mix of simple and complex sentences and here uses a variety of complex sentences so you should know at least two or three different complex structures okay complex structures just you have google google it it's really easy relative non-relative clauses uh, if constructions i mean if clauses a lot of things okay um, yeah, good control of grammar and punctuation. Punctuation is important. Don't forget about commas after the cohesive devices. However, comma. On the other hand, comma. Okay, don't forget. All right, I just go through the first task. This is a line graph. This is a bar chart. This is a pie chart. This is a table, a diagram. So the diagram, by the way, can be man-made and it can be a natural process. They are a little bit different. So it can be a linear process. It can be a cycle. They're a little bit different and they are really common right now in 2019. So make sure you practice, okay? A sequence, I've never... Um, like mad it, none of my students had it, but well, um, it's from the official source too, so make sure you can describe such a sequence. But like honestly, I've never had it. A picture, yeah, there can be a picture, or there can be some kind of algorithm how to pass the driving test, for example, how to get a driving license. So, and there are certain steps that you have to describe. A mixed diagram, there can be anything. Like, I mean, the bar graph, the line chart plus pie chart, the table plus pie chart, as you can see here. Okay? So, make sure you can write a good description of each type and practice the one you find really, like, <laughs> really challenging so yeah and by the way there is a map too but I want to like I want to pay attention to the task here nobody reads the task I don't know why so look this is the IELTS official task what does it say summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant so they tell you to report the main features. You do not need to describe everything. You should make comparisons where relevant. So making comparisons is also a task. So learn how to make comparisons, okay? And there is also a task, write at least 150 words. If you write 149, you will be penalized so you will not get the score you need. Okay, so make sure you write 160, 170, um, because like, and don't repeat, by the way, don't repeat the words, the constructions, try to be always like, like, if you want a seven, uh, I mean, your graph description should be perfect. One thing here, yeah, by the way, this is a map, so you also compare here and make sure you know um, what to write about and how to write about. <laughs> yeah, look at this meme, okay? So a lot of people just write uh, the words um, for the sake of word count, okay? I know, I know, guys. But to demonstrate um, great language, great language skills, you need to write like every sentence should be a little bit different. It should contain some different grammar, different construction. Uh, so don't always use verbs like increased, decreased, um, and so on. Try also using nouns. There was a slight decrease. Okay, try to be different. This way you show the range. 
and you show the accuracy, okay? So, these are my tips, okay? You need adjective noun and verb adverb combinations. What do they mean? Adjective noun that I've just told you, I've just mentioned, um, there was a slight decrease. Remember to write a, like the article a, yeah? Okay, a slight decrease. Then verb adverb, uh, something decreased slightly, okay? So this is verb adverb combinations, okay? Then this is for like line graphs, bar charts, and pie charts, okay? So, and don't forget to compare data using comparatives and superlatives. So, and try to paraphrase, just don't use decrease and increase. You can also say something like uh, the most popular, um, I don't know, the most popular something was this among people. If you see something uh, which was like, the, the, which had the highest percentage, okay? So this is the superlative degree. So it was the most popular among people. Or it was less popular among, or more popular. So this is like comparative language, okay? Then um, use proper language to describe how you think the process works. So, yeah, I've told you about the passive voice, okay, and there are different processes. There can be a man-made process, and there can be a, uh, sorry, not linear, <laughs> there can be also a natural process. And natural process is a disaster, because one of my students had uh, the sand dunes formation from three, only from three pictures. It was really hard for her to write 150 words, okay, but make sure you practice all of them. Correct dance is crucial, guys. The first thing you should do is just look at the dance that you use. You guys, okay, so you guys have to make sure you understand, okay, how to uh, use past, present, or future, okay? It should be always past, present, and future simple, okay? If there is no period of time, um, there mm, should be present perfect. If it, like it depends, it depends. If it is some kind of before and after, so there is no year, it's also present perfect. Okay, so and there is no period of time. For example, you have a process. Yeah, um, just use just use present tense. Okay. And for predicted information, for example, you have the year uh, 2050, um, you should use like something is expected to be, something uh, will be built and so on, okay? So active voice is used for graphs and charts and tables. Passive voice is used for processes, maps and developments, okay? So guys, make sure you know how to use that, okay? So I hope there are like no questions about writing part one. Uh, so these are the key features. So I'm gonna like make a little conclusion here, okay, before we move on to, uh, to the writing part two, okay? So in writing part one, make sure you can use the tense, make sure you write a good overview, not just an overview, but like a clear one, okay? So you write like two or three paragraphs, introduction, overview, and like details paragraph. Okay, make sure it is cohesive and coherent. And you've used different types of comparisons and you've used adjective noun constructions and verb adverb combinations. Okay, that's it. We're going to move on to your favorite. Oh, by the way, if your essay is good, it's like for eight, but you didn't have much time for your first task, it's around five, the whole picture will be like 6.5, no more. Okay, guys, make sure you write good task one and good task two, because in case you don't write um, a good task one, 
so it's gonna spoil the whole the, like the whole picture because you have like around 40 percent um of your final mark from part one and about 60 percent from your part two and some students tell me like oh my god that was the best essay i've ever written but what about part one and you know guys maybe there was a problem with part one and it has spoiled the whole picture with the final mark for your writing okay make sure you understand that okay uh, in task two, we also have these four criteria. This is the first thing you should start with, okay? You should know task achievement, task response, coherence, cohesion, lexical resource, grammar range, grammatical range and accuracy. So you know all of these, but task achievement, okay? So look at task achievement right now. A lot of you guys fail this, okay? I don't know, for some reason, maybe... So you've been taught differently. I mean, you still use something from your school and Russian students use it from their um, state exam in English. Okay, uh, in China, my students love quoting. Okay, they quote different people. No, don't do this. No rhetorical questions, no quoting. Only your thoughts. Structured, clean, direct with like great support from your examples okay so look at band six so here you again you address all parts of the task although some parts may be more fully covered than others it means if you have two questions and you haven't covered one of them so it's even band five because here it's like all parts of the task okay so relevant position although the conclusions may become unclear or repetitive. So if you repeat with the same words, yes, you have to repeat your ideas, but I mean, if you use the same words, it's still band six because your vocabulary is limited. You cannot express yourself, okay? Uh, presents relevant main ideas, but some may be inadequately developed or unclear. This is really like this is one of the problems you guys like yeah you have relevant ideas but you can't develop them you either enumerate firstly secondly finally this is unclear okay but if you have one idea and you develop it and you support it with an example this is good okay you're gonna get a higher score okay so coherence and cohesion so you'll have time to look at it lexical resource grammatical range and accuracy again mix of simple and complex sentences okay like in part one but i know you guys want band seven for your writing so let's focus on that it is absolutely different from band six addresses all parts of the task okay so what are the parts of the task uh let me show you i don't know why I don't know why you just do not see the task <laughs> i mean 90 percent of students do not see the task where is the task here yes it is give reasons for your answer and include any relevant that it's discussed both views and give your opinion of course yeah obviously but give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge and experience include any relevant examples from your own knowledge and experience you should have examples okay this is the task write at least 250 words okay if you write less okay there's no seven okay what i mostly like see <laughs> in writing uh so i gotta explain what is waffle waffle um in english it's an <laughs> idiomatic expression it's like a lot of words about nothing okay so when you start saying something like this topic has been recently discussed by all the nations yes this is a problem and i'm going to uh, give my opinion on this matter. This is all waffle. 
this essay is going to do, um, discuss both views and give an opinion. This is all waffle. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, you guys have two points of view here, and there is a distinct task. Discuss both of these views and give your own opinion. Yes, you should discuss the view number one, the view number two, and give your opinion. If they ask you to give your opinion, you should give it right from the introduction, okay? So, if you don't do this, or you do, do it like partly, you partly address of the task, like you partly address the task, this is band six, no more, okay? If you don't give any reasons, you don't answer why people think so, why people think, uh, like why they have another point of view, why your opinion is so this is giving reasons okay if you don't do this i'm sorry this is not seven okay again as you can see there is a task to include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience if you don't have any examples you do not address the task okay if you write less than 250 words i hope you don't <laughs> please okay always write more like 270 to 90 aim something like up to 270 to to like there is no limit but there is a time limit yeah and be be you know realize what like what kind of handwriting do you have how how quick you can come up with the ideas okay so nobody is going to judge you on your ideas. They are going to judge you on your language. Okay, let me go back for a second. Lexical resource. A lot of people think that, okay, I'm going to use some vocabulary from thesaurus. I'm going to use a lot of synonyms, some kind of complex big words to sound more sophisticated. And like, no, you don't need this. Look at lexical resource sufficient range of vocabulary to allow some flexibility and precision. Flexibility is again paraphrasing uh, using different uh, methods, active to passive, uh, changing the part of speech and so on, and like relevant synonyms, okay? Less common lexical items with some awareness of style and collocation, again, it's the same for like for task one. Less common lexical items, it means advanced vocabulary, okay? With some awareness of style. Again, what kind of style is that? This is academic, formal, boring essay, I'm sorry. So no spoken vocabulary, no idioms, no, uh, I don't know, words like so, words like... Uh, I forgot, you guys love using those words. They're from speaking. I mean, you can use them in speaking, but try to be like, Google academic style of writing, okay? And like, yeah, it's pretty simple. You, you should know what kind of style is that, okay? Yeah, you can produce some occasional errors. Okay, moving on. Okay, guys. Make sure you know everything about the Western style of writing. This is the most crucial part of my webinar. <laughs> okay, most of you just don't know what is the Western style of writing. So Western style of writing is being precise and using specific examples of or evidence to support your ideas. So my advice here is that you should know exactly what to write in every essay and repeat this structure again and again it should be like it should be automatic okay so look at the structure this is a classic western style of writing this is not that somebody like this IELTS exam has invented no this is just the western style of writing it has introduction it has body paragraph one body paragraph two and conclusion it might have body paragraph three, so if you're like, if you have advanced level, you can write five paragraphs or like, yeah, if you write fast, so okay, just go for it, okay? So five paragraphs maximum. So how should the body paragraph look like? It should have a topic sentence, which like gives you the whole idea 
okay? No, no waffling, okay? Just be direct, just tell me. I think so because, because of this, okay? And then explain because I can't call you, I can't text you or like ask you, what do you mean? Please explain it to me because blah, 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 blah. It turns out to be this and that, okay? Then support your idea with an example, but it should be relevant. It shouldn't be like, okay, uh, so my younger sister has started learning English uh, at five and now she's smart. So all people should learn languages and they become smarter. No, no, it shouldn't be like that. It should be really relevant with some numbers, with some, I don't know, like you should include year, percentage or some, I don't know. Remember that joke with uh, British scientists <laughs> have proved. So this is absolutely the same. So you should have an example with some countries, with some historical example. I don't know, come up with um, example from your country. Like the majority of people in my country, or in Russia, in China, in Portugal, whatever. So, or like say something about Europe. So uh, in Amsterdam, people use bicycles. That's why the level of pollution pollution is over, like is, is uh, lower, sorry, is lower. Okay, if you can, you can use conclusive statement. Just draw a little conclusion of what you've been speaking about. Again, but do not repeat the words, okay? Just try to show your vocabulary and grammar. Use different structures to prove your point of view. Okay, and make sure you understand how to answer every question. So let's look at the common question types. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Guys, it's absolutely different from the question, what is your opinion? Okay, look, it asks you, agree or disagree? Can you please choose, do you agree or disagree? So it's not your general point of view on that, okay? And look at the beginning. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Do you agree that much? Do you agree that much? Okay, so there should be an adverb. Strongly or absolutely or partly agree with that. Okay, this is how you address the task. This is how you fully address the task. Okay, so be really careful with this question. Number two, discuss both views and give your opinion. So you say why people think this way, why people think that way, and you say, but in my opinion, it can be the third opinion. It can be, I don't know, the balance of both opinions. It's up to you. It's your opinion. Okay, uh, the most common one right now in 2019 is a uh, two-question essay. Why is this happening? What can be done to solve this? What are the problems and solutions? And so on. Um, so read the question. If it asks why, just explain. Give reasons. Why is it happening? Okay. Uh, is it a positive or negative development? It, like The part two question can be mixed. It's not necessarily problem solution, cause and effect, reason solution. There can be like two absolutely different questions, like the question why, and then is it a positive or negative development? In the first paragraph, you answer the first question, why is it happening? So you again, idea, explain, example, support your idea, okay? Is it a positive or negative development? Make sure you mention it in your introduction. Which side do you choose? Like. Well, I think it's negative development because of... And then in the second paragraph, just write about negative development and prove your point of view. Okay, look at the question, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? This is not just enumerating. On the one hand, blah, 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 but on the other hand, blah, blah, blah. Look at the word outweigh, okay? So the question actually asks you to show, like, are there more advantages than disadvantages of that? Okay, so you have to answer the question, okay? And 
the advantages, I mean, it's not like one, two, three. There should be like, I don't know, big advantages and small disadvantages or vice versa. So yeah, I got my cat right here. She says hi. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to finish soon. Uh, so I think this is the last slide of my uh, of my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me right now in your comments. Okay, but I'm gonna finish. So these are real IELTS essay questions. So make sure you practice with um, authentic materials, okay? So always make sure this is Cambridge IELTS, okay? Make sure it's IELTS official site, British Council or IDP. Never practice essays from, I don't know, from just online sources because they are irrelevant. Yes, you can use the forums like Lee's, yes, or Simon, or there is another forum that where students just uh, report their questions. But students might be of different level and they also might misunderstand these questions. And hello, <laughs> okay, they might misunderstand these questions and um, just give you a wrong idea about that. So look at these typical IELTS essay questions okay so read the topic and like imagine you're a sniper and you just shoot into every word to be more precise to address all parts of the task okay so number one is some people believe that internet that the internet is the most important invention in the modern history okay Internet, invention, modern history. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So write about the internet as a significant, important <laughs> invention uh, in the modern history, modern right now. Yeah, so, and why you think so? Give at least two reasons, okay? So uh, let's look at the question number three. More and more professionals such as engineers and doctors are leaving their own poorer countries to work in developed countries. What problems does this cause? Okay, you should write at least about two problems because the question is in the plural, okay? Engineers and doctors, okay, write about engineers and doctors, yeah? So, and like what problems if the country doesn't have engineers? So I think there will be uh, like problems with housing, okay, with architecture or other things, yeah? So if the country lacks doctors, the like it might affect uh, the healthcare system, okay? So write about this. Do not write about, I don't know, firemen. <laughs> Do not write about lawyers, okay? If you have engineers and doctors, write about that, okay? What solutions can you suggest to deal with this? Again, write about solutions connected with keeping engineers and doctors, okay? Um, number four is really interesting. People are choosing to improve their appearance with cosmetic surgery. So improve their appearance with cosmetic surgery surgery do the advantages of this trend outweigh the disadvantages oh vice versa but whatever okay so you should write something like yeah there are some benefits of this trend like the person might feel better and might be more confident because he he or she has different appearance and it's easier for him or her to you know to find a job to communicate and so on but there are huge disadvantages that it might end up with, um, end up with, I'm sorry, it's a spoken expression. I'm just, you know, I'm just, <laughs> just trying to figure out something on the spot, okay? So of course, don't write, don't write uh, using some, uh, using any spoken language. It should be academic. It should be formal, no informal language, no phrasal verbs, okay? So, and you speak something about huge disadvantages, like it's a huge risk for health, 
like it can be terminal yeah a person might die okay so you should like give your position here or maybe you say there might be like uh, small disadvantages with health however there are big advantages with like personal self-esteem okay it's up to you guys but you just don't enumerate benefits and drawbacks you show the balance between that between them okay i think that's it let's uh like let me make a little conclusion about part two okay so in part two um the first thing study the bad descriptors the second thing make sure you understand how to address every type um of question because they are always different make sure you know how to answer this question how to like but it's pretty simple read the question and answer it don't think that um so it's not like uh, the state exam structure again so forget about state exam so yeah guys please Russian guys forget about the state exam <laughs> okay so it's absolutely different you like they check your abil ability to understand and to address the task okay if you do not you like can't speak English you can't understand what is being asked okay so learn the vocabulary learn different grammatical structures okay so i think two says here yeah mm -hmm. so okay i think we're gonna finish uh if there are any questions i'm really happy to answer them all okay um okay so we have a question how to generate ideas for your essay okay a good question um watch a lot of ted talks uh like take ielts books like complete ielts um it's like from 6.5 to 7 if my memory serves me right so uh there are good ielts books let me show one let me show one this is a good one. Uh, it's called IELTS Expert 7.5. So these are um, like, they have vocabulary and you can use all of these ideas here. So you are not marked on your mm, brilliance, on your amazing ideas. They can be really common, really obvious, really like simple. I mean, so what problems can uh, climate change cause so you should know that these particular problems okay uh how to generate ideas really fast um it comes with practice guys when you practice a lot when you like know the topics um so by the way ielts always has topics about environment children uh, work-life balance, um, some traditions and customs, food, global issues, animals, advertising. So just make sure you can speak about all the topics mentioned here. Okay, so there are topics, just learn them and all the ideas can be repeated. So the more you write, the more you can actually adjust like ideas to some other essays but write it in another form okay uh sometimes you guys overthink you can't you think that um you think okay they're gonna judge me about ideas or like a lot of guys are going to write about the same thing that's okay they are checking your language don't don't like stress a lot like don't stress much about the ideas they should be relevant i mean yeah they should be up to the point but yeah so my advice here is to practice more okay uh and to read more to like have relevant books okay i'm sorry my cat is going to drink and my water <laughs> okay so take the ideas from these books read good essays by the way i have my own book with my own essays i can send it to you 
okay so read good essays take ideas from I don't know Lee's essays uh, Simon's essays but uh, let me tell you something their style of writing is a little bit different it's not band 9 yeah be careful here you can take ideas from these sites okay are there any more questions okay but thank you for, for the question um, one more thing here about generating ideas when you know the structure when you know that it should be a topic sentence it should be explanation it should be an example and conclusive statement it like it's really fast you should have one idea per paragraph guys you don't need a lot of ideas you need just two ideas for agree or disagree essay so you say i agree because of one blah 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 and because of two blah 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 you don't need to enumerate this is the first mistake people make that's why maybe you can't generate so many ideas you don't need this two ideas one idea per paragraph is enough but of course if the question is about um, reasons or solutions or problems so you can name couple of problems there yes but no more you don't know you don't need three problems or more you don't need okay let me show you like um using bicycles is great okay so it's good for your health it is cheap and um so it doesn't need much space at home to keep it because the car needs uh, like some parking lot or something like that okay so there are three ideas about the bicycle but you don't need to write about all of them in a paragraph use one idea in a paragraph and say bicycles you know, like riding bicycles is great for your health because of your heart rate about like I don't know about your blood pressure or something you explain it then you give an example for example people who live in Amsterdam are all healthy because of using bicycles in conclusion if all people used bicycles they would be healthier it's just I, I mean it's real quick but it's like something how to write a good essay you don't need a lot of ideas but if your paragraph is like that bicycles are good for health bicycles are cheap or and it's easier to thirdly it's easier to keep them this is a bad structure you don't need so many ideas in your paragraph and these ideas lack focus and you will not get a higher score for such a paragraph okay so one idea per paragraph mm -hmm. any more questions are there any more questions if like i'm sorry guys i just don't see <laughs> the chat okay so i think we can finish i think we can wind up thank you everybody for your attention uh you can ask me any questions um yeah thank you guys yeah thank you thank you guys uh, so I, again i'm sorry for this problems with uh, YouTube <laughs> okay thanks guys okay thank you guys so my next webinar is going to be about speaking so see you next time thanks everybody for your attention and questions you can watch this video later so i'm gonna save it right here bye bye